Hi, this is Scott Merrick on my back porch, and I just wanted to thank K-12 Online Conference for um, inviting me to participate in this way. I just wanted to slap my mug at the start of this video so you'll know who's uh, yammering at you for the next uh, slightly less than 20 minutes. I hope you enjoy what follows, and I hope that it's useful to you. And I uh, hope that you will check back at the website and explore more deeply as your time will allow. Thanks for stopping in. Toodles. Howdy, this is Scott Merrick in Nashville, Tennessee at MNPS Virtual School. I am Virtual Learning Specialist here. I am Professional Development Chair of ISTE's SIG OL for Online Learning, and I am an Emeritus at Lowly High Grand Poobah and co-founder of SIG VE, the Virtual Environments Special Interest Group for ISTE. And I'd just like to join you today and, and uh, share a little bit for the K-12 online conference. I'm um, going to keep this under 20 minutes as directed by the administrators of the conference, and I hope that you'll find it valuable. I recently rediscovered Wall Wisher, so I'm going to use that to drive this presentation, and I hope that uh, you will take the time later on um, and your, at your own time to explore the resources I'm going to kind of highlight here more fully. To start out with, the uh, most important resource that you'll be able to access henceforth will be the um, ISTE SIGV wiki. And let's just click on this one to view it. But you can see there's a picture of our Second Life um, headquarters building, all of our social um, networks and uh, video network there. On the front page of the wiki as well is a video I highly encourage you to go check out on your own and watch the whole hour, hour 20 minutes or so of the Connected Educators Month um, um, sort of tour of virtual environments that, that our group did for that event. One of the things I'd like to highlight for you right here is Slanguages, and uh, it's an annual online conference. They just finished up their sixth year, which we'll get to, but let's take a quick look at this video. Welcome everybody to today's Sunday, the 18th of September. It's the third day of the Slanguages 2011 conference, and I'm very, very pleased. So, Professor Merman, who is Mike Mc K M C K A E Y, is the founder and creator of Cyprus Chat, and he is an adjunct professor of English at the Mukogawa Women's University near Osaka, Japan, and he holds a master degree in education and technology. And his personal research, or his research, is in ways to making language learning go beyond mere school, uh, well, go beyond school and to be more accessible, more rewarding, and particularly, obviously, a gaming environment that he's been developing. Uh, Cypress Chat is one of the uh, sims that uh, whenever we get inquiries from language learners, such as those who want to learn English, we are sending to because it's at the moment the only sim that is entirely dedicated to English language learning activities and which is free of charge. There's of course Language Lab, but with Language Lab you have to pay a monthly bonus and for some Chinese and like uh, from, from third world countries it's almost unaffordable really. So what we do is we send them to Cyprus Chat and we hear fantastic stories and one of which was uh, very touching to me was uh, the story of Kata Karisma who is from Romania who learned his English at Cyprus Chat and has become a very fervent member of your community even trying to conduct some language learning activities himself because he loves Cyprus Chat. He taught us last time uh, through your sim, we were so impressed by the beautiful uh, the corners where you can have reading activities, uh, learning activities. Uh, and we congratulate you, Professor, for doing this in, in Second Life. We're looking forward to your presentation. And you have, if that's at all possible, something like 20 minutes. I'm sorry, we're starting late. And if you could then also do uh, 10 minutes of question and answer so that we could perhaps wrap up by the full hour. Thank you very much and over to you, Professor. 
Well, I'd like to thank you very much for organizing this set of languages. Uh, I was um, sad to hear that last year it might have gone away, but you've stepped up and kept it going. Uh, we need conferences like this because if we don't, we're not able to uh, gather, record, write, publish about what's going on in, in Second Life and virtual worlds. Cool. So we'll stop right there. I wanted Mike to have a word <laughs> uh, at any rate. This is a 38-minute video, and I, hi, again, encourage you to, to please go back on your own time and watch the whole thing because you'll learn a whole lot about how the learning of languages can be enhanced by 3D virtual environment participation. Uh, that sort of sense of place at a distance is a fantastic, fantastic thing. Let's move on here. I'm looking at uh, Chris Didi. I was lucky enough at the online learning symposium at the end of ISTE this past uh, summer to spend a day, uh, and one of the keynotes uh, was Chris Didi, who's a pioneer at Harvard Graduate School of Education. I like to think of uh, the SIGBE virtual environment playgrounds at ISTE as a uh, house of mirrors, and he's done that in another way with his EcoMove and EcoMobile. And he presented about it at our September speaker session in Second Life. We hold these every third Tuesday, and Chris Didi came in to kick off our 2012-13 series. My friend Andy Wheelock hosts these, and I helped co-host this one with, with Dr. Didi because I'm such a huge fan of his. Uh, but during it, he explains um, how this whole thing works with, with a virtual environment that represents an ecological environment and a uh, build back out into the ecological environment upon which the virtual world was built and embedding augmented reality objects inside this uh, real-life uh, pond uh, environment so that kids can get tasks and, and learn and create their own learning there. Again, this is available at the Wall uh, Wisher page, and uh, that's about an hour and or so video, and I encourage you to watch that. And he really feels that perhaps they're on the track of having some authentic assessment that isn't filling in uh, little round dots with wooden uh, graphite pencils. Um, so check that out, please. Um, they have made this platform available for educators to download and run locally at their own schools and on their own, own servers. Uh, it's built with a game-based engine called Unity, and it's quite good. Let's move on to Sasha Barab. I just clicked on his um, Wallwisher object. He is the creator of Quest Atlantis, and I had my kids in Quest Atlantis for two years, my fourth graders. So I think games offer us something that traditional curriculum really is missing, and a lot of the way schools are arranged with walls... Um, where, you know, we go in here and we're going to do mathematics for 45 minutes. And the reasons why we do mathematics, well, that's somewhere out in the world. That's not here. But you're going to use it later on. So you really should know it. It's called Math and Healthy World. Mm -hmm. With a game, we can actually bring those worlds into the classroom and make those available to kids. So a kid can travel to Tanzania or into a Van Gogh painting um, within, within that 40 minutes that they have to do science or to do art. Well, we're trying to rebuild the arch that evil people knock down, um, and uh, tr we're trying to help, bas basically help the people of Quest er, of Atlantis. There's this council, and you have to, they can't do it alone, so you have to try to help them. Yes, they're quite they're the dominant form of entertainment, but do I really want the storytellers that are educating my children to be Sony, Blizzard, you know, Electronic Arts? Um, I think there are a lot of wonderful games out there that have really good messages, but I think that we as educators need to enter that market and start to develop compelling stories that kids will want to adopt in addition to those commercial ones. So I'd also uh, suggest that you go and take a good look at uh, the results from Googling Sasha Barab Publications, and I'll type that in my little notepad document so that you can see uh, how to spell his name. Um, quite, quite, actually you can see how to spell his name from inside the Wallwitcher, but there you go. There's your Google search term. He's got some really in-depth, nuanced, and uh, highly informed perceptions about game-based learning. 
which after all is a lot of what we're about when we're, when we're talking virtual worlds. Certainly in Quest Atlantis, which is a complicated set of quests, it's very socially um, motivated and centered around social responsibility, which I think makes it unique and certainly was wonderful for my fourth graders. Speaking of my fourth graders, I had them um, actually use a wall wisher wall, which I included in this little session because I think it's cute. Uh, it's not only cute, but it's also uh, a way of using this uh, unique kind of little post-it note platform to solicit responses for your um, activities and alternative assessments. So, as you can see, I asked them a few questions at the top and they entered post-it note, post notes down beneath them. Uh, it was a fun activity and it's something that you can replicate really easily in your own classrooms. As you can see also that Lucy was uh, extraordinarily verbal <laughs> during this exercise. Lucy was actually a, a child who was not very outspoken in the class, but she took to this sort of sharing uh, like a duck to water, I should say. All right, I told you that uh, we get back to languages um, this year, and it was the sixth year of the event, and I entered uh, this top right uh, wall wisher object is um, the web page for Avalon, um, which was the organizing organization, Avalon Learning, uh, of languages 2012. This was a three-day conference, completely online, with a large audience of um, attendees from all over the world. Another thing that these virtual worlds can do is extend your classroom into the uh, global stage so that you can communicate with people and work with people and collaborate with people who are miles and miles and miles away. This is a really good page to revisit as well after this presentation. It does have a whole section there on machinima. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the term, a machinima is a movie filmed inside a virtual world or gaming platform. Um, ISTE has a great machinima conference every year um, via SIGVE at ISTE, uh, and ISTE's annual conference. So the programs page, you can see not only the program for the three-day event, but how they used uh, Adobe Connect to record the sessions so that you can actually go and click on one of these and view it as if you were present in real time. Um, these online platforms like um, Adobe Connect and Blackboard Collaborate, WizIQ, those sorts of uh, learning management systems, uh, or delivery systems, I should say, um, are great for archiving things. And I told you we get back to ISTE SIGVI as well. We've been working together as a sort of a tribal community within ISTE, uh, working by our own rules, which are largely non-rules, uh, to celebrate our community and our mutual interest in using virtual worlds, um, largely as professional development. Um, but if you... It, I'm just sort of clicking around on the website here, and you can see that Maggie Murat's got this beautiful video on exploring identity inside Second Life, uh, back when the teen grid was available in Second Life. But now, anymore, you've got Open Simulator and Kitely and uh, many, many other platforms where you can have these kinds of experiences to share with your students. Maggie is also the founder. Of, it's Peggy Sheehy. Uh, Maggie Murad is her second life name, but Peggy is the founder of WOW and Schools. And just Google that one too, because World of Warcraft and Schools has proven very successful for her for her uh, challenge kids and, and her middle school in New York. So I'm just kind of clicking around here, and what I'd like to do is share my About Me page so that you, you can uh, go in and, and connect and con continue the conversation. If you have any questions, I'd really, really like you to 
uh, email me at scott at scottmerrick.net and I'm typing that out. It's really spelled like it sounds, but uh, you may have some questions. Capitals are not necessary, of course. And if you really want to connect, my About Me page is on this wall wisher. And it's got pretty much everything I do online, which is kind of sort of lots of stuff. You can have your own About Me page for free. But I find that a really good platform. I've actually printed cards with uh, a QR code that leads people to this page because it's pretty much got everything. I want to thank you for joining me today. I may add on a little bit more. I, I had intended to uh, uh, include a little tour of Kitely, and it looks like I'm sneaking up on 15 minutes, so I might be able to give you two or three more, which would give you a little bit about Kitely because uh, I'm very excited about that open simulator platform. And I want to show you what I'm doing in order to set up to use it for my kids. So, oh, I already filmed that, so here it comes. Kitely is just kitely.com, and if you go to kitely.com, it's very intuitive and very easy to set up an account and to set up uh, to get yourself an avatar and avatar name. We'll assume that you've downloaded a virtual worlds client, which could be the second live client. I'm sort of off of that these days because it's been crashy on my computer, um, and so I've migrated my usage over pretty much over to um, Firestorm, which is from Phoenix. If you just Google um, Phoenix Firestorm, I'm sorry, Phoenix Firestorm download, you'll be able to get that client. And if you have several virtual world clients like Firestorm, Phoenix, um, oh, different ones, uh, the Second Life client, you'll get the option the first time you fire up a Kitely world, you'll get the option to identify one that you'd like to use for Kitely. And I have linked my Firestorm to that. I've been babbling relatively incoherently as we get to um, my avatar inside the virtual school that I'm building out with a sandbox where you can uh, go and practice your building skills. Or the students will be able to do that. And around the perimeter of the sandbox are sort of learning objects where uh, they can go and we'll zoom in on one here. They can learn about all kinds of things, about how to do things in Second Life with their avatar. I feel pretty uh, certain that once a student has made it around this perimeter and has practiced these things and, and then gets together with others, which is really what this is all about, isn't it? that the student will have all the requisite skills to be able to proceed inside the uh, virtual Good. world. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, we'll see you around.